In this week's episode of the Stock Scores Market Minutes, we'll talk about how to know what the market will do next. I'll then do my regular weekly market analysis. We'll look at some market scans in search of opportunities, and then the trade of the week on CRWD. All right, so this week's topic, what will the market do next? It's actually pretty simple. Generally speaking, you wanna trade with the trend. So you first have to define what the trend is and then look at where price is relative to the trend because if price runs up and away from an upward trend, it's probably gonna pull back. If you're in a downward trend and you go down too fast, it's probably gonna pull up. Ultimately, the best opportunities come when the trend is broken. So if you can see what that trend reversal looks like, then you can start to do really well. Now let's take a look at a chart of the S&P 500. Now I plot the moving average on here. That's a 40 period moving average. It helps to see the trend, but I actually prefer to actually draw it. And so you can draw a trend line like that. You can draw one like this. You can draw one like this, draw one like this. You just see, I'm just drawing lines across the bottoms and the tops to define the trend. And so, in this time frame, we were in a downward trend and you want to favor short selling. However, if the market runs too far below the trend line, like it did there, then you realize that you're probably going to pop back up to it. And again, down here, we've run down too fast. And so we're going to run back up to it. Now we had a break of the trend right there, and that should be a signal to go long. It doesn't always work that way because that signal was broken when this upward trend line was broken. And then we went back into the downward trend and then we continue to move lower, get a little oversold, come back, get a little oversold, come back. Oh, look, break the downward trend. Now it's time to go long. And we have a nice upward move until that trend is broken right there. We go sideways for a while and then we break that trend and we start the next leg. So pretty simple. It's not 100% effective. You see here, we had a failure where the trend line was broken and it ultimately was just a pause in the longer term downward trend. But essentially, if you can draw a straight line with a ruler across the highs and lows on a chart, you can start to predict where the market is likely to go. So looking at the trend right now, we broke this little downward trend line on Friday and looks to me like we're going to start to move back up to the highs. Of course, a lot will depend on what happens with the weekend meeting between Trump and Xi. Let's talk about that in just a moment with the analysis of the U.S. markets. And so here is that uh, 60 minute chart, 30 day chart. And as you can see, we broke the downward trend. We've got resistance here. My sense is there'll probably be some good news out of the G20 meeting on the, on the uh, meeting between Trump and US, or pardon me, Chinese President Xi. That may cause the market to gap up into resistance. If it's just pretty good news, but not like we have a deal done, rather we're back to talking again. I think that's what will happen and you'll hit this resistance level, maybe break through it intraday, but ultimately get stuck below it, and we continue to go sideways under the all-time highs. If bad news comes, we're gonna break down from this pattern and probably then move toward that support zone. So we have resistance up here, we have support here, and what's critical is which line gets broken with some authority. That's what we'll watch for next week. Now, looking at the longer-term chart, you can see that we have that long-term resistance. It's been hit once, twice, three times. Is that a triple top? Not necessarily. It looks to me more like a head and shoulders uh, bottom pattern or uh, you know an inverse head and shoulders. And what we need now is a breakout through the neckline. If so, then we're going to make something like this where we start a new trend, broke from the rising bottom and went into the next leg of the long-term upward move. I think that's what could happen, but it's going to require a real catalyst to get the buyers motivated again. Looking at the Russell 2000, this is a daily chart of the Russell 2000, and the Russell's actually been slowly moving up, getting back towards resistance. Of course, the small cap stocks have underperformed the large caps, but it looks to me like they're starting to get some life again. That started basically at the start of June, and perhaps uh, we're seeing a little bit of trickle down effect from those large caps, money moving into the small caps. I have noticed a pickup in some of the action in those lower price stocks. And so this is a place to look again, although it's not super exciting yet, we are seeing some positivity. Onto the Canadian markets and the TSX, a little different than the US side. Of course, the heavy 
waiting on commodities and that kind of thing will sometimes make this market move differently. The uh, you know trend here was, whoops, trend here was up. And we broke that right there. We got a little ahead of ourselves, far above the upward trend line, came back to it and actually broke it. And so now we're in a downward trend. Let's see if that gets broken next week. But for now, I'd be short term, a little pessimistic because we rolled over into that short term downward trend. Looking at the longer term trend of the TSX, you can see that we are stuck under the highs. We've got a little bottom here, which is a positive because it's higher than the previous one, also higher than this. And therefore optimism is still there, but the market is a bit hesitant and we need that breakout through that price ceiling before I'm going to get too excited. So I'm kind of neutral on the Canadian market right now. TSX Venture, really pretty sleepy. Of course, there's always that seasonality to this market where it tends to fizzle out in the spring. It started fizzling out uh, pretty early after a little bit of a rally there for a few months, but we remain in that downward trend and therefore I'd be pretty careful with the TSX venture stocks. On to currencies and the US dollar, which has been great for a long time, starting to show a little bit of a weakness. We're rolling over. I wouldn't say we've broken this upward trend line yet. We're still holding in this upward sloping channel. So it's moderately bullish and it should maybe pull back another week and then bounce off of that. But if we get a strong breakdown below this, then you wanna be fairly concerned about it. I think we continue to grind our way higher in the months ahead and test those highs from late 2016, early 2017. Canadian dollar. Now this is a chart that I think is interesting. We talked about this last week. The fact that the Canadian dollar had broken its downward trend line. That's an opportunity. And we saw some follow through this week with more strength in the Canadian dollar. Volume is a bit light on the ETF. I don't know if that means a whole lot because this is simply an ETF based on the Canadian dollar. However, we have a rising bottom. We talked about this many times in the last few weeks. We've broken the downward trend line. I think the Canadian dollar starts to make back some of the losses that it has incurred over the last couple of years. On to interest rates. And of course, if this chart's going up, interest rates are going down and this chart is going up, therefore interest rates are going down. We are quite far above that moving average, but the trend line, the linear trend line is not too far away from price, maybe due for a little bit of a pullback to come back to that trend line. But I think that the bond market looks more likely to go higher than lower in the months ahead. And that means interest rates more likely to go lower than higher. On to commodities, we'll take a look at the chart of gold. Gold, of course, made a long-term breakout that has all the gold bugs talking. The problem that I have with this is it did it from uh, you know, a base way down here. And so the market's pretty overbought right now because if I was to draw the trend line, which looks like this, we're a long ways above it. And so although I am bullish on gold because of that long-term breakout, I think near term, we're more likely to see a pullback first. And that's simply because we've gone up very quickly in a short amount of time and probably a 50% retracement of that gain would be pretty reasonable before the gold market tries to go back up again. Looking at the oil chart, you know, we had some political issues with Iran and that gave some support to oil. As I talked about last week, that's often short lived. We are still below the downward trend line. We are essentially building what's called a pennant pattern where you have the cycle of compressing price volatility, I think it's going to move in that pattern for a little while. And so maybe we get a little bit more upside till we hit that and then we're going to roll over and test perhaps that lower boundary of the pennant pattern. And until we break out of the pennant, I think it's a hard market to call from a direction standpoint, unless you're a very short term trader where you can trade some of those oscillations that happen intraday. And finally, the fear chart. Of course, we like to look at the VXX as a proxy for fear and fear is low. The market, although it's not able to break through that long term resistance, is pretty fearless. And that is maybe a sign of complacency, but also, uh, you know, the big money isn't expecting bad things at this point. And so we have to remain fairly optimistic about stocks. So my ratings then, I've gone to neutral ratings on both US and Canadian stocks simply because we're bumping up against that resistance. And you can really sense that the buyers are not sure whether they have the means to push the market up. We need a catalyst. Gold bullish long term, but neutral short term. I do expect a pullback is likely near term and neutral on oil on both time frames. 
Stocks have stalled at all-time highs yet again, that's the third time now, and we're looking for that catalyst to break out through that ceiling. Now, we may get one early next week with the Trump-Xi meeting on trade, but I don't think they're going to have something really significant, maybe a little bit of optimism and ultimately moving towards a deal. But I think until a deal is actually done, that's not going to be the catalyst. Gold is strong, but it is overbought and due for a pullback. The Canadian dollar is finally showing a pulse the last couple of weeks. Oil's recent bounce back is running into a wall at that downward trend line of resistance and fear is low. All right, so let's do some market scans on stock scores, or at least a market scan on stock scores. On the weekends, I like to run the stock score simple weekly scan, and we're gonna run that one this week on the US market. Now, because I like uh, small caps a little bit more these days, they're starting to show some life, I'm gonna just do this scan on stocks under $10. So I've selected the scan, and of course, this is a tool available to stock scores investor and active trader members. I'm gonna set my price to $10 or less. That's what I've done right there. And then I'm going to add, uh, actually I'm not gonna add anything else. I'm just gonna go down to the bottom and run the market scan. It goes through every stock listed in the US and it found 39 that have potentially good chart patterns. Now we as the human being that knows how to read the chart has to take a look at these 39 and see which ones have good potential. And so I like to look for things like breaks of downward trend lines, and there is a break of the downward trend line on the weekly time frame. If I like the weekly, then I take a look at the six month daily, and I say, you know what, it's okay. It kind of started its run back in here. We're maybe a little bit late. Volume isn't real strong. So I would say this is good, but not great. I think we can do better. Let's keep on looking. You'll notice some of these I go past very quickly. I'm trying basically to save some time, but also they just don't catch my interest. This one does catch my interest. It is a stock breaking through resistance on the weekly time frame out of that rectangle consolidation. Let's take a look now at the daily time frame. I just click on that little at 6M, which gives me the daily time frame, and I can see that we were bumping up against that resistance level for four months or so. We've built a rising bottom, and now we've broken out. Now notice we're breaking from some volatility because that move started on Wednesday. And therefore, I think it's more likely that we'll see a pullback before the stock goes higher. And I'd maybe consider it more so on a pullback rather than chase the gains of the last three days. And we can minimize that just by clicking on it. Keep on moving. Here's another one that looks pretty interesting on the three year weekly chart. Let's take a look at the six month daily. And there I see a breakout through resistance, um, a little choppy in here. So that increases the chance that we pull back before we go higher. I'd give this a six and a half out of 10. I'd also give the last one a six and a half out of 10 if you're wanting to know my numeric rating. Here we have a VEON broke the downward trend line actually last week, but I do like breaks of downward trend lines, especially after making multiple bottoms. You see how often that stock hit 220 and just couldn't break down through it. That means the buyers were defending it. However, the problem here is we have this longer term downward trend line there, and that's gonna minimize the upside potential to maybe that $3.40 level. And if we think in risk reward terms, if you're buying at 280, your stops down at support at 230, you don't really have enough upside to justify the risk. And for that reason, I give it a six out of 10. So that's the kind of thinking that I apply when I look at charts. And this is all things that I can teach you in the Stock Scores education. Go to the Stock Scores website, Go to Trader Training on the website and you can learn more about the different training options that we have at Stock Scores. Let's continue along with today's presentation and look at the day trade of the week. This is a trade that came up on Friday, CRWD. Now the reason I show this one is it really shows the power of my Action Candle Indicator. And the Action Candle Indicator is something that's available with my Active Live service and also to my Active Trader students who use TradeStation. It triggered right there. Now, if you were watching that stock at that moment, you would see a nice break from an ascending triangle pattern and say, hey, that's a good reason to buy. I mean, it's pretty basic technical analysis to do that. The problem, of course, is why would you be looking at that stock at that moment? And that's where the algorithm comes in. That's where my active live service comes in because that service tracks every stock that's listed in the US looking for action candles. And then we check the chart and we see that nice breakout and it's, timely we're in an in on that trade within uh you know it's a two minute candle so we're in that trade and within a couple of seconds of it being found and this one went for a nice run now you look at the economics here if you are willing to take 
$100 of risk on the trade. It was a 350 share position, which is fairly large in terms of capital, $22,800. But of course, you can leverage that three to one if you have a margin account that gives you capital required of $7,610. This stock made an 11.33 gain, and that meant an $1,130 gain on $100 of risk, a 14.8% return for a simple one day hold. In fact, it was only a half a day hold. So that is a very nice return on a day trade. Well, that has been the stock scores market minutes for June, no, July 1st. Happy Canada Day to all my Canadian followers and I hope you have a enjoyable long weekend. Of course, Independence Day on Thursday and so to our American friends have a great holiday as well next weekend. Hope that you've enjoyed this weekend's Market Minutes. If so, please click on the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, trade well.